words between the United States and Iran intensifying. President Trump says he will hit back fast and hard if Iran carries out its threat of severe revenge after the killing of its top military general. Well, Boris Johnson and other European leaders are calling for restraint, but with Foreign Secretary Dominic Raab backing America's right to defend itself, should the UK fully support the US or step back from the escalating crisis? We're joined now by the acting co-leader of the Liberal Democrats, <coughs> Ed Davey, who says UK's defence of Trump's actions is misguided, and the former head of the British Army, General Lord Dennett. Well, good morning to you both. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, congratulations, first of all, on your elevated current position. Very kind, Piers. Um, there's a, a big job for the Liberal Democrats to do now, and um, I'm very privileged to be in the role working with colleagues. Would you categorise it as, as repairing the wreckage? <laughs> well, we didn't have a good election, that is absolutely... You had a disaster. Yeah, it wasn't good. Um, but there's a huge job to do. Um, we've got a, a Conservative Party with a big majority. They need to be held to account. As the Brexit legislation and the negotiations go forward into stage two, we've got to make sure that the potential damage to Britain's economy is limited and we stand up for British business uh, in a way which uh, Boris Johnson hasn't always done. OK, I mean, it was a message that the public clearly rejected, but I wish you luck. Let's uh, turn to this very serious current situation involving Iran. Donald Trump, President of the United States, basically ordered the assassination of the second most powerful person in Iran. Soleimani was the leader of the Quds, the Revolutionary Guard, special forces who have been terrorising the Middle East for decades under his leadership. No one seems to be mourning his departure, apart from a few people in Iran. Are you glad he's dead? Are you glad he's been removed from uh, committing these acts of terror, as many people see it? With respect, I don't think whether Soleimani is, uh, is alive or dead is the real issue. The issue, of course, is Iran is a dangerous regime. Mm. The question is, how do you manage that? And has this assassination helped in managing Iran? But and are you pleased he's Iran? gone? No, not pleased at all. Really? I, I, no. You'd like him to still be around committing acts of terror? No, what I would like is to make sure that American policy is helping st stabilise the Middle East. Mm. We've seen, particularly since the disaster... Did Soleimani stabilise the we've, Middle we've, we've, East? We've, we've, we've seen, did Soleimani... We've seen, no, we've seen, I get it, I get it. We've seen, no, no, we've, seen, can't, we've, can't seen, be... we've seen since the disastrous Iraq war yeah. the Middle East in a real mess. Yeah. Mm. And Britain was wrong to back America I agree. in the Iraq war. I agree. I, and, I, and, I fought the campaign to stop the war happening. Good, good. and so did Liberal Democrats. We yeah. were on the front line against the Iraq war. And the real danger is mistakes are made again about interventions, even uh, intervention which might seem small to many people, the assassination of someone who was not a good man. Um, but look what's happened. Before this assassination, the Iranian people were worried about their government. Mm. We saw uh, protests against the government because of the economic hardships. Mm. And the uh, hardliners were in problems, the moderates still were powerful. What's happened now with the assassination of General Soleimani is the hardliners are now actually in control. I get it. But they, they, to, they've united I get Iran. It, but just to clarify... It's dangerous for America. I get it. It's dangerous for the West. It's dangerous for Britain. OK, but he was also very dangerous for all those things. Soleimani actively sought to kill British forces, American forces. He was terrorising through proxy groups all around the Middle East, from Yemen to Syria to Iraq to Lebanon. I mean, this is a very bad guy running a very bad series of proxy please, please, terror groups please, let me be clear. around the Middle East. I'm not going to defend General Soleimani. No, but I, asked, evil, evil, I asked, were you the, pleased the, he was gone? No, and you said you weren't. No, no, I'll tell you why not. Why wouldn't you be I, pleased he's gone? Because of the damage it does yeah. to the Middle East. But the implication and, and it, is... You, no, no, okay, Piers, my Piers, final it, point on this... I'm you're sorry, implicate. I'm sorry, you, you're just wrong on this. No. I'll tell you, I'll tell you why. Well, you because, may say because, I'm wrong Because on the this. issue is, how do you manage to get peace, reduce conflict, yes. reduce threats to Britain? And that is well, the question. That's okay. the policy... Can can I, hang on, hang and on. And I think Donald Trump got this Let wrong. Let me... Well, fine. You're entitled to your opinion. I'm simply saying that keeping Soleimani there, doing what he was doing actually okay. was very bad for the security of this country, American forces and so on. Let Lord, Lord Richard, can you I, Well, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Lord Richard Dunner, the, the key point is, does this boil down to one individual? And therefore, by getting <clears throat> rid of one individual, you stop that strategy? Or does this destabilise the region, 
Does this increase the risk to us? And does the strategy continue, never mind whether it's Soleimani running it or some other Iranian general running it? Well, Susanna, there's a whole bunch of questions there that you're asking. Um, <clears throat> taking the leader out obviously is going to have an effect on any organisation. But bear in mind the Quds force that Soleimani has built up over the last 5, 10, 15 years has been responsible for a huge expansion of Iranian malign influence across the Middle East. Mm. I'm also very conscious, as a former head of the British Army, that when we were losing soldiers in 2005, 6, 7 around Basra Palace, intelligence showed us that the weaponry being used against us by Shia militias came from Iran and from, and from the Quds Force. So he's got British blood on his hands. Mm. Um, it's ghoulish to say one's pleased about the death of anybody, but this man off the playing field has to be to the wider benefit of, of okay, so the, as the an situation so in the Middle East eventually. So targeting him and assassinating him is a benefit. But what if the ramifications are, as Ed Davies yeah. says, that Iran now becomes more hardline, the people who mm. were dissatisfied with their government and could possibly have affected some kind of change, right. then rally behind and we face a more dangerous situation. No, as a I, th I think that's a perfectly reasonable interpretation to make. The hope has always been, and we saw it 10 years ago when the opposition in Tehran was really quite strong, that the moderate opposition would get control of Iran. Mm. Um, that hope remains. I think what you're saying, uh, in the light of what's just happened, is the hardliners will coalesce around each, each other. Um, unintended consequences. Yes. Um, Pre predictable consequences is what I would say. Uh, quite possibly. Um, well, you would predict but, a response. The question is, how proportionate will that response be? Yeah. Let, let me ask you, would you categorise Soleimani as a, a leader of a terror organisation? The way the Quds Force has de developed over the last 5, 10, 15 years, I think ca characterising it as a terrorist organisation is a fair one. OK, so let it's... me... So give me how a former head of the British Army categorising this guy as a leader of a terror group, effectively. Let me ask you, Ed Davey, were you pleased that Baghdadi, the head of ISIS, was assassinated in September? Um, I think there's a distinction between a non-state actor who's not representing a country mm. who is a terrorist and um, I was quite happy when, for example, Osama bin Laden was assassinated. So you were, you were pleased yeah. to see bin Laden uh, assassinated and, 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 yeah, and you were pleased to see Baghdadi assassinated but you're not pleased to see a man that the head, former well, head of the British Army has just categorised as a terror leader assassinated. What is the difference? Well, there's a big difference because the impact it has on peace and stability mm. In the region. Well, hang on. No, the no, impact no, of no, Osama no, be, bin Laden's no, no. death and Baghdadi's death were reprisals from Al Qaeda and from ISIS, which, again, using your words, could have been easily predicted. But your concern no, no, is that this no, will lead to a. It doesn't mean it's a bad thing to kill no, them. Piers, there's a big difference between the head of a terrorist group that doesn't represent a state and the head of the second in command of another country. But as they're committing no, terror, no, what's no, the difference? Well, because you can manage and, and talk to a government. Let's remember that a very good president of the United States, President Obama, engaged with Tehran, engaged with people like Soleimani. When you say he was a very uh, good and, president, well, you say listen, he was a very good president, how many drones did he order? How many bombs did he drop, Obama? Well, let on me, often let, let, innocent let, 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 let me tell you why I said that he's... Do you know the answer uh, to that? So, well, I don't, but... but, but well, you but, say but he's Piers, a very good guy. Piers, but let me but actually, what, he was okay. also a weak leader of the West. Well, let right. me, and actually, uh, Piers, can I well, ask one of the your reasons, question? One of the reasons question? why the Middle East is in such a mess is there has been an absolute absence of proper leadership from the West. Led by the inaction by Obama over Syria... Well, and, when, and, when, and I completely to, disagree with this. And to when Assad crossed his Trump chemical well. weapons red line that Obama set... Well, he I'm didn't not sure that the invasion it. of Iraq... What, 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 what happened uh, with <laughs> Obama was we had a deal with Iran, which Britain is still British policy, by the way, still the policy of this mm. government, to try to contain Iran, particularly over its nuclear ambitions. And that treaty was effective. Mm. Now, um, Donald Trump has pulled out of that treaty mm -hmm. against British wishes, against French wishes, against German wishes, against the wishes of the world, and I think that has undermined stability. Okay. And what we should have seen, both from Obama and in particularly from Trump, who lets me know he's been in power for quite a while, we should have seen a much better engagement. That failure of America under Trump to engage is okay, what Lord led to this. Well, your response. <laughs> I mean, there have been two policies that have been in conflict for some time. One is the policy of engagement, which might have worked. So far, it hasn't worked. The nuclear deal was an illustration of trying to make it work. What we now see, is, apparently, is a policy of confrontation. Mm. In the short term, confrontation will have uh, unexpected consequences, quite dangerous, potentially, in the short to medium yes. term. But in the medium to long term, maybe confrontation 
getting back to the 1930s type appeasement, the alternative appeasement is confronting a bully. General David it, Petraeus, it, who's the former... Uh, David Petraeus is absolutely on the money. Well, he, he said concern. he felt this would restore the deterrent element, which had been actually lacking through the Obama but, years. And, and potentially will incur, will curb some of Tehran's expansion and, and the Iranian... Look at the Ed Damien. Let me ask you a question first. You answer. Right, you say you were pleased Osama bin Laden was killed because he's a terror leader. You were pleased Baghdadi was killed, head of ISIS, because he's a terror leader. You're not pleased that Soleimani was killed, even though he's been categorised by the former head of the British Army as a leader Different of a terror status. group. Right, OK, but still committing acts of terror against our forces, actually. So my question for you is, how long would you have left Soleimani to continue his rampage of terrorism through the Middle East? At what stage, if you were leading this country, would you intervene against someone like him? Would you ever? The best way to deal with someone like Soleimani is to make peace with Iran. Obama tried to do that. We should Obama be... failed to do that. No, he got a, uh, a the first treaty... He didn't have peace with Iran. He There's got... been no peace with Iran. <laughs> Iran's been running a murderous rampage throughout the Middle well, East maybe for the I'll, last two Maybe decades. I'll get a chance to finish well, the answer. Do you dispute here. that? No, um, listen, Iran is dangerous. I'm no supporter of Iran. Soleimani was dangerous. The question is, and this is what, that you're missing, Piers, the question is how do you deal with them? How do you deal yeah. effectively well, with I'm them? Well, I'm not okay. missing it. Uh, okay. It appears Lord Dannett appears to be well, missing it as well. Talk to you appear to know more than him well, no, and General David Petraeus, talk, talk, one of the most decorated well, American Piers, generals. Talk to Sir John Sawyers, former head of the MI6. Talk to Richard Dalton, mm. the former ambassador. When I was on the National Security Council, being briefed okay. by MS6, yep. by br briefing MI5, they will be giving me the advice which I am using now to answer your question. OK. okay. Just, for, just before we let you both go, Lord Richard Dunnett, how do we make sure that we're safe in the wake of this? I well, mean, our, our troops are safe, our civilians are safe. We've got to, we've got to take a range of actions, and we've got four, four or five hundred troops in Iraq. They need to stay very close to the American troops there mm -hmm. to make sure that they enjoy the force protection of... Um, that um, Americans can provide. I think also it's fair to say that British holidaymakers in various parts of the world um, are potentially un under threat. I think our Foreign Office needs to talk very closely to holiday, holiday des destinations to make sure their security forces are looking after tourists. After all, it's but in given the economic relative strength of the two military powers, Iran and America, the chances of an actual war here are... Very low. I mean, They're low, negative. but I wonder whether the chances of... An there, will, there will be retaliation. Yes. Um, we don't know what, we don't know when. We must be prepared for it. But it won't be a classic, no. kinetic-type no. fight. No. I General, mean, that's just not practical. General Dunnett is right. Because of this action, mm. which you seem to be supporting, Piers, British people around the world are less safe. Mm. That cannot be a good thing. OK, that is your supposition. I would argue they've been unsafe as long as Soleimani was around. So it's a, it's a debate... It, it, about it, them, yeah. David Petraeus is right. Yeah. David Petraeus, Petraeus is right yeah. that Tehran and Iran's influence must be curbed. OK. Frankly, the sheer crescent that they've this created... very bad way okay. of doing it. Uh, Lord well, thank you very much indeed, Ed It's a good debate. I like listening to a politician lecturing a former head of the British Army on the way to deal with people in the middle of the world. I've actually supported him in his last point, Piers. I missed that, obviously. Good to see you both.